Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and friends beyond the binary, it's time for the podcast so it's kind of smiling because I want to create a warm, welcoming place for you. Uh, can you feel it? Uh, I'm glad you're here. And the reason I want you to remind reason the reason I want to remind you of that is because from here on out I may not pronunciate uh, correctly. Because uh, the safe place and s- safe pronunciation don't necessarily go hand in hand. And the reason why it's time for sleep with me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. I want to thank everybody that worked so hard to bring you this episode tonight. Chris Posty Posterson from Sounds Like an Earful Studios edited this episode, did the theme music. Jonathan Mann was on the lullabies. I'm at Dear Scooter on Twitter. Kenny, Scotty, and Jennifer on our, on our, on our artwork. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the podcast and whatever app you use, uh, just hit subscribe. Yeah. Particularly if you use Apple podcasts, uh, like, uh, just get, say, Hey, there's a new episode of sleep with me. I would, uh, you can turn auto download on or off. Uh, and speaking of automatic kindness, I want to thank uh, the moderators, the listener Facebook group over at sleep with me podcast.com slash nods, uh, uh, Laura, Keith, uh, Stacy, Julie, Jennifer, uh, Sarah, thank you so much. And uh, what do you say we keep the show going? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble with getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do with a bedtime story. All you need to do... For all you can could do if you choose so choose to uh, is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm gonna do the rest, and what I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, physical, uh, something physical that's keeping you awake, uh, something that's, that's on your mind, something you're experiencing emotionally. Uh, changes in routine or weather, travel, work, uh, life, you know, life stuff, any of that life stuff. Even if you had one too many, like, life wa- I think there's a, a drink called life water. And you might have had a couple of those. You said, well, I'm going to listen to the podcast for about 40 minutes and then, you, you know, then uh, de life water and then go get back in bed. You know, it could be a reason. I'll be here. I'll be here for an hour. Uh, or you woke up in the middle of the night, you said, well, man, one too many life waters or tea. That, that, that happened, that's happened to me. And I say, uh, okay, no more tea at bedtime. Because uh, me, me, tea equals the letter P. Uh, they rhyme for a reason. And not just in the music, man, in the bedtime biz, too. Capital T or small minor case T, whatever you call it, it rhymes with P. And that stands for pool, uh, but not like, like, uh, like, like, you know what I mean? Don't pee in the pool either. By the way, this is, it's not summertime yet, but don't pee in the pool. That has nothing to do with anything. Oh, I was trying to say, I'm going to try to create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. And I'm going to try to make you feel welcome. I don't know if I did that. Cause if you pee, you say, well, it scoots, it feels like, okay, well, if you want to pee in the pool, uh, you probably, the odds of me being in a pool with you are low. You like, uh, I can relate. I, I acknowledge both sides of the, the pool peeing issue. I got to move on from it, even though my brain is caught up in it. Uh, I'm going to try, I guess I like, I didn't mean to get into a issue, issue based, uh, that's as, that's as, is this as big an issue as will come up on this podcast, ideally. So I'm trying to figure out, change the subject. My brain just says, keep talking about it. I, no, 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 no. It's time for sleep with me. Not time to talk about pool issues. Yeah, Cause then we could get into towel, like, uh, what do you do? Like the towels and stuff. So let's see, like, uh, flip flops or no flip flops. What do you call them? Some people call them thongs. Some people call them flip flops. But I'm going to try to create a safe place. I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. No running, that's another thing. I don't know what's going on with my brain. It's in summer mode. Uh, I'm going to send my voice across. I'm just going to try to, uh, I'll try, don't worry, brain. I'll re-engage you in a few minutes. Let me get to the new listeners for first before we talk. We'll try to make a metaphor about pools and uh, 
So I'm missing my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, brain calming, uh, emotional soothing. That's, that, that was the name, I think, of one of my bands I never made. They said, wasn't it, it was an emotional healing? No, no, and it wasn't the other kind of healing. I don't have any experience in that either. That was called emotional soothing. What kind of music was it? M- music like music, but then they told us they, that was their brand. And uh, like uh, it was just mostly me humming, actually. It was called emotional soothing because it soothes me emotionally when I hum. And I thought I'd put out, you know, I thought I'd go on tour. But then I realized how, oh, let me get to the new listeners. It went off to tangents. There's a lot of tangents in this podcast. Uh, but in an attempt to emotionally soothe. So if you're new, let me get to that. If you're new, here's the structure of the show. First four minutes or so are business. That's how we keep the show uh, on all the archives free. Are the sponsors uh, at the beginning of the show and between the intro and the story. Uh, so thank you for listening to that part. And thank you for supporting the show. So that's it. that's the, the 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 how we could keep 650 plus shows uh, pretty cool. You can you can pick and choose. Uh, then there's an intro. We're about six seven minutes into it. The intros are about 12 to 14 minutes of me rambling, in a familiar way. Uh, some people fall asleep during the intros, and some people get ready for bed during the intros. A lot of different ways to use the show. Uh, but the intros are uh, part of the podcast, a show within a show. Not very showy, uh, unless you count going off topic and forgetting, oh, pools, what was it with the second topic? Uh, emotional soothing. Uh, and then I usually try to make a metaphor about what the podcast is. This during the intro. Uh, then we have a story, which is about 45 minutes uh of uh, like a bedtime story, like tonight, I, I don't know what the story will be yet. Uh, it's coming up. It should be good and lulling and soothing, ideally. And then we'll have some thank yous and stuff. So the show is about an hour. I'll be here about an hour. If you're new, you're under no pressure to listen, no pressure to like the podcast, actually, and no pressure to fall asleep. Uh, just see what happens. That's what I say. Like, uh, come check it out. Uh, like a pool, you say, hey, test the water, see how, see how it suits you. And in some sense, like a pool, you never know. I mean, at least with me, my daughter is at the age where, like, she, anytime we stay anywhere with the pool, she wants to go use the pool. And they say, well, how about I just take a nap? And why don't you take a nap uh, instead of going to that pool? You think it's like 54 degrees outside. Oh, don't worry. The pool will be heated. Well, it will be heated everywhere. And then you get to the pool. And sometimes you're, for, at least for me, I say, oh, boy, I'm not getting it. She said, come on, let's get in. Let's play a little, uh, like, uh, you know, ch- chase or whatever. And I say, it's, it's, it's not my temperature. And she said, well, you didn't even test the water. I said, okay, you got me. Okay, there's my toe. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's my temperature. But then if I test the water, sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes I say, okay, it's going to take some getting used to. That would be this podcast, probably. Uh, But there's other times I get in there and I say, oh, boy, it's delightful. This is the perfect temperature. And I say, what was I resisting? And I get in there and then I'm saying, oh, boy, this is great. Uh, And, you know, you swim around, you go under. I, I do like to go, here's my favorite thing. Uh, this has nothing to do with anything else, but if you're into, into getting into pools, uh, I like to sit on the bottom of the pool. I don't know if anybody else is into that, but I find it very relaxing. What you do is you just ex, you know, exhale, keep, you know, close your mouth or whatever. And then you just sit on the bottom for a little while and you, you know, you can choose, you could sit like a, like a guru would sit. That can be fun. You could cross one leg and pretend you're having tea. That's another one if anybody's watching. You know, then you get that performance aspect, too. Uh, but sometimes you just sit down. They just say, well, wherever my butt lands, I'll just do that, and I'll sit down here. I don't know. I, I do find it. I do, they, say, they say, "What do you, Scoots, what do you do to relax? I sit on the bottom of a pool for however long, you know, two minutes, three minutes, uh, one, maybe 30 seconds. 
Yeah, that's my, they say, what, Scoots, what's your jazz? What do, they don't say, what's your jazz? They say, what's your cup of tea? But what, there's another word for it. Like, uh, it's not your swerve. Uh, getting your swerve on is something different. Uh, you know what I say? Oh, what's your jam? I, I was just listening to a podcast. I tell you, like, a volunteer and teach podcasting on Mondays. And they think someone said, what's your jam? And they said, well, sitting on the bottom of a pool. Is that like sitting on a dock of a bay? I bet you it actually isn't that much different now, but you're just uh, underwater, a little bit quieter down there, and I find it relaxing. And he said, like, if I could, like, I don't think I found a way. It would be too much work to do it, like, for a long time. So I just say, well, when I need air, go back up. And I guess it's with this podcast, what I'm shooting for is, is, uh, Whatever that experience is for you, for you, you, you may be scratching your head. Uh, you're in bed, you're scratching your head. You say, really, that's, w- w- that's one of your real, ho- that is a real hobby. If I get in the water, that's the first thing I'm thinking, w- okay, when am I going to be sitting down? And, and I do it in lakes too, not just pools. And I am an eye open. I keep my eyes open. So they, like, usually I try to bring some eye drops, uh, where was I? Oh, so yeah, the, like I'm hoping to create a, re- that relaxes me. And I don't know what relaxes you, but I'm going to try to take your mind off of whatever isn't relaxing you because it's bedtime and I really believe you deserve a good night's sleep. So I'll be here to distract you. And maybe you'll be like the other pool patrons and looking quizzically at a man drinking tea at the bottom of the pool. That That's a way to distract you. you say, okay. I'm wondering why that gentleman's down there sipping, pretending to sip tea. Oh, now he's constructing, not constructing, conducting an orchestra. And you're not thinking about all those kids that are making so much friggin' noise while you're trying to relax. You're kind of relaxed because you're kind of distracted. Is is that what he's doing? Is he constructing? Oh, now I think he's debating. He's giving a speech or debating. He's sitting on the bottom of the pool and he's maybe he's miming. Uh, interesting. I don't know. Uh, I've never seen anybody do any miming routines at the bottom of a pool before, but uh, he seems very real. He has a placid look on his face. Uh, oh, now he's coming up in some air. And now he's backstroke. This would be if someone to talk about a boring podcast. It would be someone do, do, doing my day at the pool. Well, backstroke. Uh, technically, it's not a backstroke. Back floats. So that's kind of the pod- podcast by a nut in a nutshell. That's what I always say occasionally is uh, to keep you company, uh, to be your boyfriend, your companion in the deep dark night, to walk at your side, uh, telling you a rambling story while you drift off into dreamland. If you're new, give it a few tries. That's what most listeners say. Uh, they say if it took a few tries before it... Uh, I realized it was just a strange man at the bottom of a pool pretending to have a tea party. And then I realized, huh, it's not that bad. Watch it. They say, well, relax is me. Watch it. Strangest thing. Maybe I could do do that for a living. They say, if the podcast doesn't work out, they say, what do you, what do you do now? What happened to that podcast? Uh, it didn't work out. Uh, and what do you do now? I perform at pool parties, believe it or not. Oh, like kids' parties? No, pool parties, uh, uh, okay, well, like, uh, what, you do some sort of synchronized uh, thing or mag- magic? No, 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 uh, like, well, kind of synchronized, I guess synchronized, uh, synchronized with synchronicity, if you don't mind me saying. Uh, no, I just, I do performance, uh, oh, what kind of performance, uh, I sit on the bottom of the pool and I do, it's, it, there's not a market for it yet, I'm ahead of the market, uh. For by you know it, wait so you sit at yeah I sit at it's a it's a performance art uh, actually believe it or not it hasn't been recognized as such yet well let me tell you what if Marcel Marcel or whatever uh, you know this is the next thing oh you're like a mime well no I'll do some miming but I actually don't have you know I, that's another art form I don't have an experience in miming. It, that's just a, like the closest comparison. I, like, I have a tea party sometimes. Uh, I do different routines at the bottom of the pool. Oh, like sw- like swimming routines. No, no, no. Uh, 
Uh, I just sit at the bottom, bottom pool and do stuff. Oh, and people pay you for that? Well, not yet. I, I envision it one day happening, though. You know, like in the movies, in the future, when people are so wealthy, they said that, you know, the, the, so it won't be far. I don't think it's far off. The rest of that stuff is close. It, the only thing missing is a man, uh, but, you know, having a tea party. You know, it's a th- it's going to be a thing one day. Until then, I'll be making a sleep podcast. I think this is probably better for me anyway. So, you know, I'll be less waterlogged. So I'm glad you're here. Give it a few tries. I really want to help you fall asleep. That's why I make the show. That's why I say just give it a try. Give it a few tries if you'd like. No pressure. I'm here to help, but it doesn't work for everybody. I appreciate you trying the show out. And I work very hard. I take this show seriously, as silly as as it is, uh, because I've been there. Uh, sleepless tossing and turning in the deep dark night and i want you to feel less alone so i'm here to help uh and i really yearn and strive to help you fall asleep thanks again for coming by all right hey everybody it's time for a trending tuesday episode and i had a new idea for trends you know because uh, the new seed of the, the, the whole thing with the current events can kind of really uh uh you know be a damp rainy day and foggy, also with uh, mist and uh, cold air. So I'm always looking for new ways to find random trends, and I I think I've thought of a new one. Now, I I guess I should, I was like uh, thinking when I had this idea, should I clarify up front or should I just use, uh, go with the trends? And I think I'll clarify. So I'm going to use this, because this could be a new thing. I don't think I'll use it all the time. But I'm going to use a, a, sh- a set list from a fish show. From This one will be from this summer, from uh, 72217, uh, one of the Baker's Dozen shows. Now, if you're a, f- a fish listener, this won't be about fish, fish mythology or fish won't be in this. So, so I just want to, because I said, well, let me clarify. And if you don't listen to fish, you, you, you get, you get, it's just the same as Twitter, tw- tw- Twitter trends. Also, I don't think that I think the fish show will actually would actually be longer because I think those are usually like a. Let me just do a ballpark here: four, forty, four, ten, twenty-seven, thirty-seven, forty-four, uh, fifty, uh, fifty-nine, sixty-one, seventy-four minutes, uh, ninety-four minutes. So that's already an hour and a half uh, plus uh, eleven, uh, twenty. 24, yeah, about two, uh, this show is uh, pretty long, and uh, so I get, like, uh, and if you don't listen to Fish, uh, I guess you don't have to, or, you know, you, you, it's uh, no pressure, but I had heard from some listeners, uh, I don't know, I, I just thought, well, there's a, like, a non-loaded uh, way to come up with trends, because Fish songs, can be, I was having a conversation with somebody, actually, uh, someone from the STEM podcast, uh, and we were just talking about how, like, how random, like, uh, it's a bit, they're a bit nonsensical, like, the sleep with me, some of the lyrics, but we're just going to go with the song titles. Some will be covers and some will be originals. And I guess, like, I guess, like, out myself as a fish, a fish fan, like, uh, if Marco Armit can be a fish fan, then I think I can be, like, uh, so, like, but, uh, it, it's really good, at, like, uh, music to listen to, not when I'm writing, but when I'm doing other podcast stuff, uh, it's good background music. It's a, but it's not everybody's cup of tea, just like Sleep With Me podcast. Uh, also, uh, yeah, like I said, they can be a bit goofy, their sense of humor. Uh, I don't know, I feel like they were, like they were a big influence on, on me, yeah, mostly my subconscious. And their ability to kind of reinvent themselves a few different times, even in subtle ways, and sustain their career, uh, and really like uh, be at the forefront of the new men- like uh, saying, "How do you make move?" Like it's always a question, like, "How do you make money making a podcast?" Uh, being a musician is kind of the same thing. And yeah, they already had an audience and stuff, but they like uh, make most of their money, I think, on touring. Uh, but they also have a very, uh, I don't think, I don't know if it's unique, but yeah, their way of digitally distributing. I mean, they're on the music platforms, 
Uh, but they also have their own app. Uh, I don't know. Like all their shows are available uh, for purchase. I think at least in the last uh, whatever, 10 or 15 years. Uh, so anyway, th- and it's interesting because this story that I'm about to tell you, it started in New York City in Central Park. Uh, and not that long ago, it felt like a dream. It was one of those warm, extra warm spring days in New York, a uh, day after the rain, almost uh, summer heat. Uh, and I was in Central Park and the grass, wet grass, uh, was already breathing the humid air back in, into the sky. And I was trying to, like, I was trying to find the strawberry fields. I said, I know there, I know I've walked through the strawberry fields. It feels like forever ago. And I wanted to go through the strawberry fields. Uh, I, like, I guess like, this is a, like a, another point of contention for Scoots is like, I have, uh, I guess this kind of rhymes too. I have Central Park regret. Uh, if I had a song about Central Park, it would be. I don't think that's a Simon and Garfunkel song, but it should be Central Park Regret. Because uh, I don't. I lived in New York City. Actually, I have. Mo- yeah, I do have Central Park Regret. Like, I guess you could say Central Park Regrets, but that's not as good as a song title or like a book title. Central Park Regret. Uh, and maybe that was a Paul Simon in, you know, just Paul Simon by itself. Uh, but yeah, I was in the Central Park trying to find my way to Strawberry Fields, of course, without asking or anything. And remembering that I lived in New York for four years and I just didn't spend enough time in Central Park. Uh, there's so much to do there. I heard, other than walking around or li- like, here's what I did. I lied around a few times, played some Frisbee. My favorite Central Park memory was just, uh, uh, well, I had a couple. Let's see. Was this the same time? No. It, like, usually it was like my favorite Central Park memory. It didn't have a lot to do with Central Park. Unfortunately, it was like cutting across the Central Park. Uh, I was with another student. We were on a project for a class. And I think if I talk it out, I'll remember what class it was. Uh, but we were, we had to cut across Central Park, uh, or we did, we, we went together. We went from our school in the Bronx, the Boogie Down, and I don't know if we took the subway in or there was a commuter van service to the Manhattan campus of our school. And yeah, la di da my pinky's in the air. Okay, believe me. Um, but we were, we were cutting across. I don't remember the student's name. He was a year or two behind me. Really nice kid. And we were kind of chatting about life and and, and, and stuff. And we were headed towards, uh, I think the magazine or the, yeah, it was a monthly magazine. Oh, I, can't, I think it may be, I don't know if it was Art News. Uh, I can't remember the magazine, but the magazine, it was uh, like uh, we were going to magazine and the magazine, their offices were in the National Geographic's like adventures, adventure, like, uh, like this brownstone, uh, somewhere off a of museum mile, I think maybe on the same street as, uh, the Guggenheim, but down the street, uh, you know, I don't remember what the building was called, but it was like, literally like the adventures, like, uh. I'm pretty sure it was like the National Geographic. Maybe it wasn't like their offices because obviously they would be housed. Uh, it maybe had nothing to do with the National Geographic, but I'm pretty sure it did. Uh, and it was just this cool old brownstone that was almost like a museum. And I think it was, you know, nonprofit. National, I think National Geographic's a nonprofit. Uh, but it had all this stuff from adventuring, like paintings and. Uh, fig- figures, I'll say, like uh, of different forest friends. Uh, some that maybe even saw Haley's Comet across the sky long ago. But me and my, me and my student, my other student, we were going, I want to say it was Art Forum. I, I can't remember. Like, so there was an art magazine whose offices were there. And it turns out, for some reason, like, I think we were doing a report on forgeries. And maybe this magazine had something to do with it, but they were like, uh, it was the most uh, insider tour I've ever got. One of the most insider tours I've ever gotten in my life uh, because we got a tour of the building because it was so historic. And my companion actually knocked a giant painting down and 
usually I'm the one that does stuff like that because we both had backpacks on because we were supposed to be doing a report. And this was at the beginning age of uh, of digitizing. So we got to see a lot of digitiz- digitization. And I guess I didn't re- retain anything we learned. I, I, I mean, I remember talking, like, uh, the, the editor, she was telling us about the, the mission of the magazine and a little bit about digitiz- digi- digitization, digitize, whatever that word, digitizing. Yeah, but in a current, you know, whatever, the verb or the noun version of it. Uh, and we were there, and it was just cool. Like, uh, it really felt like... Uh, I guess, like, living in New York, I didn't take advantage of these things as much as I should have. Now I said I would have had another occasion to go uh, to these offices. And I I think maybe our our report must have been on, like, uncovering forgeries, because, like, that's the only thing I can remember, other than digitizing is, uh, like, uh, like I remember the painting getting knocked over. I remember the forest friends. You, you know, this is like uh, one of those brownstones. When you go in, there's a foyer. Is it a foyer? And then to your right is, like, a sweeping carpeted staircase with wooden banisters and, and going up. Uh, and so this trip, I said to myself, uh, I couldn't find the strawberry fields, so I made my way back. to. The, I said, well, let me see if I could find my way back to that office. Uh, which didn't really have a lot to do with that. So I headed towards the Guggenheim, which I said, okay, let me just cut across the park, see if I can find the Met. Uh, then I'm pretty sure I could look up and down the street and find the Guggenheim. And I remember one of my other great uh, memories was going to the Guggenheim. I think by myself, uh, I don't think it was for a project uh, that I remember but it was for a pop artist, and now I can't remember who it is, uh, uh, so I'll have to look it up. Of course, it's if if, uh, if I hadn't, you know, like, uh, what do you call it, eroded my authority on all things, I'd be embarrassed. But it was a really cool, really experimental, even for the Guggenheim. And if you've been in the, like, if you've been in the Guggenheim, it's just a lovely, lovely museum and uh, the layout and this one had like one of the displays was a giant pile of bazooka gum so that might help some people that know and narrow it down uh, or if you i'm sure if you google it that'll come up if i did maybe I'll, let me pause it and let me do that okay i couldn't find it easily i didn't want to use up it too much time uh uh, but like, uh, like, uh, it was like, it was a good thing about, uh, you should check it. If you're in New York, check out the, don't be like scoots. Uh, go to the Guggen. I guess I did go to the Guggenheim, but I would go. I, I wish I could go every time. I wish I could go every time to the Guggenheim, uh, New York or New York. Uh, so nice. They named it twice. And if you're there and you have the time, make sure to visit the Guggenheim. Uh, but, but, uh, so that was another great memory, even though <laughs> these are vague, foggy memories. But I made it to the entrance of Guggenheim. Then I debated going in there, but there was a long line. And I didn't, you know, I said, okay, I think it's on this street. I don't know. And I can't remember now. What is that? Like 45th, 55th, 95th, something. But I headed down. It could be on this, it could be 6th. Uh, it could be 80th. I don't think it's, uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, but I headed down that street in. And then I realized I needed, I said, well, uh, how many you can you get it into this historical building uh, when I don't even remember the name of the magazine or the name of the building, but I do know it has forest friends. So I started, I said, okay, let me uh, get into a character. What character could I get into? And I thought about, uh, uh, like, I started dancing. I was doing the MoMA dance. And I was actually kind of making it up as I went along because I didn't know what it was. And they passed a vendor, and I said, okay, I think I'm close because I was looking at the brownstones. I was looking for those gold placards that are in set, you know, buildings that are in the historic register. And I said to myself, uh, huh, how, uh, how am I going to find this building? And I saw a street vendor uh, selling some uh, uh, kebabs, and I said, okay. Uh, let me, I said, I could go for one. And they said, do you want spicy? I said, oh yeah, uh, give it, you know, give me a spicy one. 
and you know it was slow because it wasn't lunchtime, so we ha- were having a chat. Because yeah, when I get when there's cans of soda, I tend to buy two cans of soda just because I'm a little bit obsessive. Uh, so I drank one and started to eat the kebab, and it was warm. It was uh, my breast. It, it was breast and burning. You know, my my uh, mouth. Uh, and because the, the vendor, he had said, well, I never seen anyone dr- order two Cokes before. Are you, are you sharing with someone? I said, no, 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 just myself. Uh, uh, so I, he said, what are you uh, up to? I said, oh, I'm uh, vis- visiting an old friend, an old friend, an old stuffed friend. He said, oh, yeah, there's a lot. He goes, there used to be old money on the street, not anymore. And not so many stuffed suits on the street anymore. And I said, well, I'm looking for, I'm actually going to the old, the old adventurers club. Uh, like the explore, I think it's called the explorers club. Actually, pardon me. It just, it just dawned on me. He said, uh, and he said, oh yeah, it's, uh, it's rebuilt three doors down. And he said, what are you doing there? He goes, you, he goes, you don't look like, unless you're so venturing in uh, high fructose. I said, yeah, no, no, no. I am. A, I'm a bit of an adventurer. You might not believe it. Uh, he said, also, your shoes are untied. I said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And this was a delicious, uh, a delicious uh, treat. Uh, and I said, it's too bad you don't have a restroom because I don't want to really go into the uh, the Explorers Club and ask you to use a restroom for a thing. But I said, it was fate I came to you because I was calling it the Adventurers Club because I'm more of an adventurer than an explorer. But they kind of, you know, they... Uh, they still, they they may let me in. Uh, and uh, he said, okay, well, uh, good luck with that. And I said, well, I still have to finish the second soda. And he said, well, what kind of adventuring do you do? And I said, well, I, 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 venture, I venture, my ventures are regrettable. Like I venture in regret. Uh, I'm like a VC. He, I said, you know what a VC? He said, of course, a venture capitalist. I said, yeah. Well, my capital is regret, uh, capital city, <laughs> uh, capital letters at the beginning of my name. And, uh, he said, so you're doing, yeah, I said, I actually, I'm suffering from a case of central park regrets, uh, and to, to actually, uh, distract myself from that, it came down here, uh, because, uh, I need an adventure to do. And he said, okay, well, he goes, what kind of adventures do you, did you do previously? And I said, oh, like I said, like, uh, re- 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 like I, I venture, I said, do you, do you have any re- regrets? Uh, and he said, a few. And I said, uh, I said, well, it's like we're going to be singing a musical in New York together. And he took it, he, he realized it after a second. He said, yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. I said, we'll be called uh, Central Park Regret. That would be the musical. And I said, that would probably just be a song in a musical, actually. And he said, what would be the other, he goes, what would the song be like? I said, probably with good, I said, probably Paul Simony. I said, I would, you know, if I, if I could pick how a song would be, it would be funky. Uh, like, uh, and like, uh, other things, uh, like I'm going to go see, I, I go, I got to get back to the adventuring club because I remember there was a stuffed uh, dog there named Sheena. Uh, so I said, that could be a funky song, a dog, a stuffed dog named Sheena. And he said, no, no, that's not a good song title. And I said, you're right. Uh, and I said, okay, I'm finished with the soda and I got to go potty. So I'm going to have to get, get into the, uh, Explorers Club. So thank you for your time. And, oh, I said, oh, he said, well, you don't want to hear about my regret- regrets. I said, no, no. I said, I was going to use that as a jumping off point to say, not to diminish your regrets, uh, because I'll just be passing over them at this point. But I said, you, you, to comparatively say, I venture beyond those uh, day-to-day regrets. Uh, and he said, sounds like you, you may end up regretting regret. Uh, and I said, hold, hold on. That's, I said, is that the bridge? Uh, I can hear Paul Simon singing that. Uh, Sounds like you'll end up regretting regret. Uh, he said, did you know, uh, when was the last time you checked uh, Garfunkel's blog? He reads like so many books, uh, but I haven't checked it in like eight years. And, 
he said, anyway, I got to go. He said, maybe I'll stop back and hear about your regrets. Uh, he said, do you regret anything? Because uh, I said, he said, yeah, can you stay here? He goes, I regret never going to the Guggenheim. And I said, well, I'm like, I said, uh, okay. I said, you're right. Uh, and he ran off uh, and headed to the Guggenheim, uh, presumably. He said, can I trust you with my food cart? I said, uh, do, do, does it look like it's in good hands? And he said, well, it's the slowest part of the day. And I said, don't worry about it. Like, uh, what are you going to regret more? And they said, you're right, maybe I just, and I said, no, no, go, go to the Guggenheim. I said, but try to be back in like three minutes because, because I had two Cokes, uh, really. Uh, and he said, would you really watch my, and I said, well, yeah, sure. I said, but let me, um, they said, I'll be back in a few minutes because they said, this, it won't work. You can't be at the Guggenheim for three minutes. Uh, so I said, let me go over to the adventure, the Explorers Club, check in. And, uh, uh, like I said, probably take me 10 minutes. I'll be back. And, uh, a guy knocked, rang the bell, actually knocked in, rang the bell at the Explorers Club. And they said, who's calling? Uh, he actually had the thing. And I said, it's a, I said, it's a mound. It's round. He said, it's a mound. And I'm here, uh, tartar, tartar to everyone. I'm back, uh, from the big, Big explore. And I said, buzz me right in. Uh, and they said, where are you from? I said, uh, I said, I was here years ago talking digitiz digi I'm here with the digitization, uh, redigitizing. Uh, I believe there was a mishap about a, a few years ago. Not very many, just a few. And they said, okay, uh, what? Uh, and then I went, and they said, well, who are you here to see? Uh, and then, I, but they had already buzzed me in. That kind of happens sometimes when you, uh, and then someone was coming out. I said, pardon the foam. I said, pardon the foam. It's all over me. And they said, what are you talking about? And I said, uh, I said, I said, would you mind if I said, it's been a, it's been a quite an adventure. And I'd like to wash my hands, if you don't mind, right away. Uh, chip, chip, uh. Tar, 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 tar. And then other people were coming out of other offices. Uh, and then I pretended, I said, okay, well, I better cover myself. I said, it's been years uh, uh, since I've been back. Uh, I said, I was here with a, another lad, a young lad, uh, who knocked that painting over. Uh, and then everyone kind of turned and looked amused and ended up that the kid that knocked the painting over interned at the Art Forum or Art News or whatever. I think it was Art News, maybe. I, I'm not sure, but... Uh, and they said, like, his name. Unfortunately, I had, like, at this point, the two Cokes, I said, okay. And they said, oh, oh, yeah. We, he, like, uh, they said his name. They said, oh, yeah. He, we, that was when he was first visit here. Talks about all the time in the break room, all the time. How he knocked the painting over. And, and I said, and confetti fell out of the bottom of the back of the painting. And they said, wow, you're that guy he was, who was talking his ear off the whole time in the walk here, uh, saying how bad you wanted to ride the Central Park carousel. And they said, I forgot all about that dream. I was lost in the, lost finding the strawberry fields forever uh, earlier. But I said, for the love of Rogue, uh, uh, Roger, uh, tar, 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 tar. I said, I, they said, why do you keep saying tar, 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 tar? I said, it's an adventure. I said, it's an adventure. You know, it's just the adventure in me, uh, coming right out. He said, is Sheena, the cat still here? The, the dog. And they said, let me go, let's go get your friend. I said, yeah, well, let me wash my hands first. Uh, and they said, okay, it's right back here. Like usually like to the side, just in case you're in a brownstone and you're in, you're in an adventurous club. Uh, if you come in the door, I can't remember what's on the left at desks and offices is in like, like fireplace lounge, uh, to your right or staircase, you know, the nice staircase, uh, and then to the left of the staircase is where usually there's like a bathroom, like under the stairs. Uh, so that's where I, that could be a cloakroom though. So don't go to the bathroom in the cloakroom. Sometimes the bathroom be on the left or straight back. Uh, 
And this one just happened to be straight back. As I said, it headed straight back down, the, down a few stairs, uh, and I headed down the stairs and it was one of those like uh, kind of half, the halfway to a basement room. It was cool. When it, you know, when you go in a wet, cool basement room and, uh, it almost wakes you up. And then I, you know, had to like, uh, ease those Cokes out of my system or sodas. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, other brand name sodas, uh. RCs. It probably was RCs, actually, if I'm remembering. And I eased those out of my systems. I was like uh, singing the squirming coil, like hardy har har. Uh, you know, it was kind of more humming that. And they said, okay. Then I came out, I washed my hands, and the kid from college was there, but he was a man now. And he looked at me strangely. And I said, you probably don't remember. I said, you, he said, you're the guy uh, that was here with the confetti. And he goes, remember you joked that there's probably uh, a uh, a map in the back of the painting. And I said, yeah. And, and I said, the woman from our, I said, why? Well, first of all, I said, I asked, why is there confetti in the back of this painting? Because what had happened was, uh, and then we did, we actually, I told this story to the staff that was gathered around. And uh, he said, actually, believe it or not, this is going to be the strangest thing you've ever, anyone's ever heard of in the Adventurer's Club, but I'm in the middle of an adventure. And they said, what kind of adventure? I said, an adventure, an anti-regret adventure. So if you'll join me at the uh, kebab stand, uh, the kebab cart, uh, three doors down, I'm enabling adventure, anti-regret adventuring. And they said, well, it's about time to eat. Uh, like, I see, yeah, it's mid, like mid afternoon snack time, even though I think it was like 11 in the morning, but whatever. I, I you know, I was mixed up. Uh, so we, they said, What? And I said, Just trust me. And they actually, every, this uh, particular work environment was very upbeat. Uh, so everyone was saying yes. So we went out to the kebab stand, and I start for some reason, I started calling uh, the, the, the person running a stand, DWD. Uh, uh, like I said, DWD, you head out, uh, cause they think maybe he had given me his name and then I'd already given him a nickname, at least in my imagination. So he headed to the Guggenheim and once everybody looked like, like they, everyone was bemused and amused cause they said to the, uh, Chris, I think was a young man who was now an adult, uh, he said, Chris, where did you get, how, how do you, well, do you guys know each other? I said, not very well. I said, uh, well, where were we? I said, also, who, these kebabs aren't free. Uh, but I said, uh, you know, uh, I'm here working already. So anybody, and I said, uh, and there's pretzels too. Uh, so I started selling stuff to the, everyone that worked in the, the Explorers Club. And I said, so anyway, it was like yesterday to me. I said that your backpack knocked down the painting. And I said, I'm, I felt bad for you, but I was also like, thank goodness, because I always knock everything over. And he said, yeah, remember you said you would push over a statue for me. I really appreciate it that you gave, you know, gave me that offer. And he said, you probably, I said, yeah. And I remember the painting hit the floor and it was, we were all frozen. And I said, but the, the, uh, you know, the person from Art Forum or Art News, uh, he said, oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, he goes, uh, he goes, it wasn't either one of those, I don't think. Uh, he goes, anyway, go on with the story. And everyone was actually giving me the rapt attention. So I, maybe I thought, like, uh, I thought I was on an, a dream adventure. And I go, I remember, like, some of the... Uh, 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 confetti I, made me want to sing Strawberry Letter 23. Uh, and he said, why? And I said, well, because some of it was strawberry colored. He said, it was all, and I said, who puts, uh, uh, confetti in the back of a painting? And he goes, yeah. He, and he goes, remember the, the, the frame wasn't broken. So we put it back up on the wall and, uh, you know, the person, our host, she said, don't worry about it. It seems fine. But I, I, he goes, well, you were so struck by, I said, yeah, are you sure? I, I remember, I was like, are you sure there's not some sort of secret map in the back of there? And I said, this is just like the Goonies. Uh, he said, except the three of us aren't really like the Goonies. Uh, two college students, uh, 
Ian, an editor of, uh, uh, like, uh, like, uh, our, uh, I said, yeah. And someone working on digitization, I said, we're, we're certainly birds of a feather. If you don't mind me saying, uh, and everyone, like, uh, everyone, all the people listening story kind of like had a hearty har har cause they squawked like a bird. And I said, yeah. And we didn't get to see if there, we put it right back on the wall. And Chris, he said, yeah, I never forgot that moment for the rest of my life. He goes, it changed the course of my life. Uh, and he said, also, you wouldn't stop talking about it on the walk back uh, across Central Park. He goes, I can remember. You said, I've always wanted it this way uh, for my life to end up just like the Goonies. Uh, and I said, yeah, it never. I said, it never did. And he goes, really, I, I've imagined you out there. And I said, adventuring and regret. I said, I, like, uh, let's let's talk about you, though. And he said, well, what the heck happened here? And I said, uh, I was in, I was suffering from Central Park regret. Uh, then I came looking to for a distraction, and I wanted to return to the Explorers Club, but I couldn't remember the name of it. I stopped and got a kebab here, and two cokes or two sodas, two RCs. And he said, because you need the extra energy. I said, yeah, totally. And I said uh, that, uh, I said, um, I was having a wonderful conversation with DWD. And he said he, he always regretted not going to the Guggenheim, working here in the spot. Uh, so I said, you could go to the Guggenheim after I use the bathroom in the adventure, the Explorers Club or whatever it's called. And I said, but what were you saying, Chris? And Chris said, yeah, after you were talking about that, I couldn't stop thinking about how cool it was that we were in the Explorers Club that had a fireplace and all sorts of uh, forest friends. And I thought about you and how you kind of said, this is all of these dreams uh, started here at the Explorers Club. And I said, and all the forest friends' dreams, you know, they kind of uh, went, you know, and he said, yeah, he goes, that's... Uh, but he said, I couldn't stop thinking about that confetti and that map. Uh, and he goes, I had to, uh, he, I had to, like, uh, he goes, I started volunteering at the Explorers Club. Uh, and then I became an intern, an unpaid intern. Then I became a paid intern while I was at school. He goes, and I started studying uh, fun, fun uh, whatever that stuff's called, where you write grant writing. He goes, because they rent these offices out, and, and uh, they're able to do it because it's a foundation and everything. And they distribute a lot of money. So he said, uh, I started, like, I became a grant writer, for I said, for the Explorers Club. He said, well, uh, uh, affili affiliated uh, nonprofits. I said, like, National Geographic. He said, if I told you, you would split open and melt if I told you really who. Uh, and I said, holy cow. And I said, I wonder what DWD is doing in the Guggenheim. And the people started, some of the other coworkers started talking about all the interesting exhibits. They said, you should go check it out. And I said, I should. But uh, I said, uh, I said we're in the middle of a Chris's story about the confetti, actually. So I said, I don't want to steal his thunder. Plus, I need to know the resolution. And Chris said, actually, I got so into it. He goes, that at some point it slipped into my subconscious again. And he said, I forgot about why I started obsessively trying to get a job here. And he goes, and I moved up uh, through the affiliated companies. And I created, he goes, and we created this umbrella nonprofit because we were so successful and he goes, and also you have to figure out with uh, the real estate values, uh, you're protecting these buildings or historical buildings. He goes, it gets more and more tricky. So he goes, it really, he goes, I had this whole vision of creating this umbrella uh, explorers club, exploring different uh, opportunities within nonprofits uh, uh, to spread the idea of exploring just beyond adventuring. And I said, have you written any grants for exploring regret, uh, Central Park regret? Uh, and he said, uh, he said, no, we haven't thought about that. He goes, I don't know. He goes, I could probably research it and see what kind of grants. Uh, 
I said, maybe a grant for me. I said, I guess Paul Simon doesn't need any grants. Uh, neither does Garfunkel. Uh, but maybe like uh, some, something to get say, hey, make a song called Central Park Regret. Uh, maybe even now the two of them walk. Oh, oh, I just thought of another Central Park Regret I had uh, when the, I never saw the gates when they were there. And for some reason, everybody rolled their eyes at that. I said, OK, well, anyway, uh, I said, back to your story, Chris. Uh, holy mackerel. He goes, and I said, by the way, congrats on the success. Uh, he, he said, well, congrats on your successes. And I said, uh, uh, with uh, regrets or I said, today's a big success already. Uh, you know, because I got, I said, those, those sodas, one, that was a big success. Uh, uh, two, uh, hopefully DWD's enjoying uh, Guggenheim and running into you uh, and all your lovely co-workers here. And now I'm running, who would have thought I'd be running a kebab stand for an hour or two, ideally less than an hour, because uh, I hope DWD's walking fast through the Guggenheim. And he, I said, hey, but, but he said, so you forgot that you were there. Uh, to get to look be look into why the confetti was in the back of the painting, and he said I did, and he said till this moment, and he said believe it or not I did. He goes I've had a lot going on in my life, uh, and I needed you to you to come to shine a light on this situation. And then DWD came running back, and he was saying peaches and regula, peaches and regula. Uh, regalia. I said, oh boy, DWD's excited. And I said, what's up, buddy? And I said, how's the Guggenheim? You didn't take long. I said, you could have taken five more minutes. Uh, and he said, no, no, no. He goes, there's an artist there doing a new installation. And so I couldn't get in. And then I told them the story. And uh, they said, part of the theme of this new exhibit is regrets. Uh, he goes, what is it? He goes, I go, that's like confluence. I said, I don't know if it's confluence. It's the other thing. Synchronicity, I think. And he said, the artist, uh, she said, bring your kebab carts, uh, uh, during installation and we'll make it, we'll make it part of an installation. And he said, so I'm moving to the Guggenheim. And I said, well, DWD, let me just, on your behalf, uh, do they guarantee? And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, actually, I can pull it out at lunchtime onto the, onto the sidewalk in front of the Guggenheim. And I said, peaches and regular, indeed. Holy cow. Uh, I said, you've been zapped with good luck. And he said, I have, so I'll see you. And I said, well, I said, I guess it's inside uh, to continue this adventure. Uh, and Chris said, okay, uh, that painting's been on the wall. He goes, I've walked by it thousands of times. I can't believe I forgot, uh, about the confetti. And I said, well, uh, I said, well, it's time. And so we went in and we lifted the painting off. It was a painting of adventuring, uh, the kind of pos exploring actually. I don't know, remember what you're exploring because they said, why in the heck uh, would uh, would someone, I said, I still don't get why there's confetti in the back of it. Uh, and then everybody who worked in this building was, you know, gathered and uh, we turned it over and it was covered with like that craft paper canvas uh, uh, type thing. And we were poking at it. Uh, and we shook it in some n never, you know, uh, it had been restapled and kind of, but shaking it got a couple pieces of confetti, small pieces of confetti out. And then a woman, Sheena, that just happened to be named Sheena that was working there. She said, just this confetti, it looks like it's like a 1960s confetti. And I said, wow, you're, uh, con you're, you're quite the confetti expert. And she said, yeah, yeah, it's one of my things. Uh, and I said, what should we do? And uh, it, then we debated ripping it open, of course, uh, and pro like probing it. Uh, we were probing it for weakness. Uh, but it had been, it, it, I think maybe even new craft paper had stapled on the old craft paper. 
And they said, I don't know. Like, this is a tough call. And Chris said, technically, this painting is owned by, like, uh, the, he goes, uh, I'm the director. He goes, so I don't know if I would have to run it by the board or not uh, uh, to explore the back inside of this painting. And I said, where's your board of directors? He said, cities everywhere. Uh, if I pick a city, find yourself a city to live in. Or they could be in it. And I said, okay, so... Uh, I said, I guess it's on you to decide what's in there. And he said, uh, he said, okay, well, he goes, it's just paper, right? Uh, and he said, and then actually like some of the other, uh, executive members of the staff were there and they said, okay, we'll just take a vote. Everyone, yes, everyone's hands went up. And, uh, yeah, we ripped off the first thing of paper, which was probably only a few years old. And then behind that was another set of craft. I don't know what you call it, but back of the painting paper. Uh, but more, uh, uh, more and more confetti was clearly in there. And then we took all took a giant breath, and Chris ripped off the pa- next piece of paper. And behind that paper was a ton, a ton of confetti, uh, which had gathered at the bottom. Uh, but some of it was like even stuck o- along the whole painting. I mean, this painting was probably, uh, eight feet, no, not eight feet, uh, uh, six feet by four feet. Uh, so big, big painting. And then as we moved to some of the confetti and then actually they started to con- collect the confetti and prepare it to be archived. Uh, and then in the back of the painting, uh, uh, kind of glued it to the back of the canvas uh, was another smaller canvas. Uh, and it was a love letter in there uh, that said, My Sweet One. Uh, together we adventured and explored, uh, uh, you know, and it used the metaphor, subtext, you know, said, you know, the wild to hear. And I said, I never saw that movie with uh, Robert Redford. He said, wasn't there a love movie, uh, out of, I said, was that with Explorers or Adventures or were those, uh, uh, cool, you know, I said, was that more of a colonial thing? And it was just this long love letter, uh, and it was actually written in the 1960s. So then people were like, hey, like, uh, cause these, these were pros. They were like, okay, uh, 1960s confetti. And it went on and said, you know, we went, we ventured here. It was a, between a, a writer and a photographer uh, that had fallen in love. It was a beautiful story. I mean, some of it we had to research afterwards. Uh, but with the internet, yeah, like, uh, but it said, my sweet one. And then, yeah, everything else was too, it, it was a little bit syrupy, to be honest. I said, well, this is a little bit on the nose, you know. Anytime you're exploring the wilds, I say, come on now. Uh, uh, like, how many times? I said, if you're writing a love letter on the back of a painting, you can only use honeyed nectar once, uh, maybe zero times. Uh, so, and, and of course, like, like, uh, they said, nature's call means something different to me. He said, I know it, it may, like, in this context, it meant like, a, like, a wild howls or whatever. But I said, nature's calls when I had two RC colas. Uh, and this was like the funniest I've ever been in my life. I was cracking. This staff, I could have, I probably could have got a job there. And I said, well, it's not really a treasure map unless you're using like super, like, uh, and everyone laughed at that. Uh, they said, man. And I said, well, what's, uh, what's to do now? And they said, well, now we'll contact. They, they said, okay, hold on. And then Chris got an idea. And he said, he hung the painting back up. He said, uh, Drew, walk by this painting. Just be, he said, I want you to go upstairs and see my office. Uh, and I said, okay. And this was like, the goon, this was the closest the Goonies in my life would ever be. Just like Chunk. I said, okie doke. Uh, and it was right at the turn. Uh, like you go up and then you do a left to turn. And so, of course, I clipped the painting. It fell. And Chris said, oh, dear, uh, everybody come quick. Uh, his painting fell and the back's ripped off. 
And everyone got their story right about this My Sweet One. And it ended up, uh, at some point, I think it'll be about like, uh, I don't know if, it, I guess it is a podcast episode. But then I went out, you know, I went outside and I said, "Where? this is how forgetful I am. And we used the restroom again for another, like, you know, rest of those RCs. And, uh, you know, we, we set a date to get back together. They said, well, we're having an office. You know, I never did because they said, well, we're having our office party. Uh, and we'll have to celebrate if we do an article about this. Uh, and they said, oh, yeah, I'll totally keep in touch. Uh, but I had been too vulnerable. You know, I, I, I couldn't, like, uh, I had to, you know, I had to see another. This would be, I said, I, this is a. Uh, I didn't tell them that, but then I headed outside. I couldn't find DWD because I forgot already that he had moved to the Guggenheim. And by the time all this was done, especially, you know, because we were researching a lot on the Internet, uh, it was evening. And there was a chill in the air. And uh, I I said, well, maybe I should uh, go into Central Park. and I said, uh, then I saw DWD. I said, D- D- DWD, like, because I was walking down the block towards the park. I said, where's the carousel? And they pulled out a co- like a carousel token. He said, ride the carousel on me, buddy. And uh, then I ran back to the offices of the Explorers Club. I said, everybody, let's ride the uh, carousel. But I guess they couldn't hear me because they were working. Or maybe they had left work. Uh, so I headed back and I rode the carousel. I rode a pony uh, that I that I called uh, my sweet one, and I petted it as we spun around. And uh, I guess like I didn't get to put my actual Central Park regret to like I wouldn't have a case from that trip of Central Park regret. Uh, uh, and I said, well, I can always, I always have that. To, if I ever meet Paul Simon and he says, do you scooch? I'm, I'm short on song titles. Uh, you know, I have that for me. Uh, so until my next case is Central Park Regret, uh, I have to say, give you a strawberry uh, letter uh, that says good night. I uh, want to thank everybody who helped out in uh, PayPal and Venmo, uh, Pamela. Uh, Clarity Writing and David, thanks, thank you, and good night. Uh, thanks and good night to Martha, Amy, and Anne, thank you, and good night. Uh, to Elizabeth, Andrea, and Lorraine, thank you, and good night. To another Andrea W., uh, Madeline, or Madeline, and Claudia, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, thanks and thanks and good night to Natasha, Sharon, and Rachel, thank you, and good night to Susan, Liz, and Ryan, uh, good night, and thank you to Kenneth, Sally, and Ann, uh, thanks, and good night to Paula, Priscilla, and Rebecca, uh, thanks, and good night to Kathleen for her birthday pizza, uh, Stacy, and uh, Esperanza, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night to Catherine, Allison, and uh, Kiara, uh, thanks, thanks, good night to Brendan, Amanda, and Brian. Thank you, thanks, good night to Benjamin, Jen, and Michael. Uh, thanks, thanks, good night to Laura, Ross, and Robin. Uh, thanks, thanks, good night to Angela, Michelle, and Stephanie. Uh, thanks, thanks, good night to Drawn, L, and Lisa. Thank you. Thanks, and good night to Sarah, Elena, and Ariana. Thanks, thanks, and good night to Sasha, Kendall, and Amy. Thank you. Thanks, and good night to Mary, Stephen, and Brianna. Uh, thanks, thanks, and good night to Tanya, Spring Ridge, and Janet. And as everybody gave one time support over on PayPal. And then on Venmo, I want to thank uh, Valerie. Thanks, thanks, good night. Anya, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Tara, thank you, thanks, and good night. Betsy, uh, thanks, thanks, good night. Aaron, with an A, thanks, thanks, good night. Uh, Grace, uh, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Jennifer, thanks, thanks, good night. And Jamie, thank you, thanks, and good night. Thanks, everybody, who supports the show. Uh, thanks, thanks, and good night.